connect it like that. And there you go, that board is connected to the piano. Tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner, tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. So I have this cool keyboard that I can play music on, and it's this old thrift store keyboard that I got for about $15. Now, sadly, this keyboard has broken. I was playing it, and this happened. Oh, incarnation. Rest in peace, old keyboard. Now, I was kind of sad after this keyboard broke because I used it a lot. Now, I'm not sure what exactly caused it to break. It may have just been all that uh, electromagnetic radiation from my Tesla coil and everything else that I've been running on my desk. So, I decided to take this keyboard and fix it because it was still perfectly good mechanically and all the switches and electrical contacts inside the actual keyboard still worked. So I wanted to turn that into something that I could play through my computer, through a MIDI cable, so that way I can use an audio program to actually record those MIDI notes and even play my own voice as a sample. So I looked on the internet and I found this video by a guy named Evan Kale. Now this guy made a video about turning an old keyboard into a MIDI keyboard. I'll have his video in the description. And he had a code for this, so I decided to use this code and use his circuit and build something. So in this video, I'm going to build this circuit and actually print it on a piece of copper cladboard. So it'll actually be a real printed PCB, which makes things a lot easier when building this circuit. I'll also be explaining how this circuit works in detail and how all the components are able to interact and how the code works in order to make this piano play MIDI signals. So let's get started. Now this right here is the actual keyboard with the circuit prototyped on here. Now this is not a very clean circuit, there's all kinds of wires going everywhere, and if even one wire gets pulled out, this whole circuit isn't going to work. I've also got the MIDI cable coming out of the keyboard right here to plug into my computer. So let's hear what this sounds like with this prototype circuit in place. So this is my original prototype. It took a little while to build and figure out, and figure out how all the wires go together. But anyway, this is what is controlling the piano at this present time. Now, let's go and take a look at my schematic that I drew up in Easy EDA, so we can figure out how this circuit works. Alright, so let's go over some technical details about how this keyboard works, and then we'll get into the schematic, and then we'll get into the code. So, let's take a look at this. This is an example of the keyboard matrix inside the keyboard. Now, the keyboard matrix is there, so that way we can control all those different keys and read their inputs with a very small amount of pins. So in the case of my keyboard, we have uh, six, I mean 11 pins up here and six down here. This is just a picture that I found on the internet and this is a smaller amount of pins. So anyway, what happens is the microcontroller turns on each of these individual things separately and in a sequence and then it reads the resulting uh, values on these pins which are uh, digital inputs of high or low. Now we have the switches right here so what happens is, is if CO is on and it reads that RO and R1 are high that means that S1 and S9 are being pressed then if it switches to C1 then it reads uh, and then if R2 is high then that means that S18 is on. But we have these diodes down here, and these diodes are here for a specific purpose. Because let's say we turned on uh, S1, S2, and S10. Now, when CO is on, uh, we should only be reading uh, a value from RO, because the only uh, value when it shifted to CO should be RO, because it goes through S1 and to ground that's not the case because something called ghosting uh, starts and that's when the current flows from here it goes through this switch through this line through here into R1 and so when CO is on 
R0 and R1 are high, and the microcontroller thinks D1 and D9 are pressed when D9 is not actually being pressed. And so these diodes are here to block the current flow through here and back up different switches so it can only flow down. And this solves the entire issue and it makes the keyboard work flawlessly. And I could press all the keys at the same time and everything would work. Now this is my circuit, and I made this um, partially out of the circuit that Evan Kale made. Well, he didn't actually have a circuit, he just had a, a few other things in his video. But anyway, this is the Arduino, and I use an Arduino Nano. And then right here are the two shift registers, and each shift register can be controlled with three pins uh, from the Arduino. So the Arduino controls these 11 outputs with three different pins, which are clock, latch, and data. And the data pins are actually daisy-chained from this one to this one. And so that is how the Arduino can sequence each of these individual pins, uh, the 11 ones, inside the piano. And now D2 through D7 are all the inputs, and those have a resistor to ground. This makes sure that none of these pins turns on extraneously, uh, but those are connected to the main header that's connected to the piano keyboard. Now over here we have the MIDI port, the MIDI port that goes out, and that goes from the TX to pin 4 of the MIDI port, and then we have uh, pin 2, and that's ground, and pin 5 goes through a 220 ohm resistor to 5 volts, and that's the current sync. Let's take a look at how MIDI actually works. So MIDI works in this um, special format of data, and this has been around for a long time, and this is universal. But what happens is um, we have a series of 8 bits uh, and 3 bytes, and each bit inside the byte tells uh, what number the byte is, and um, each of these things tells a different thing about the note, such as byte 1 says the pitch, or the state of the note, byte 2 says the pitch, and byte 3 uh, says the velocity. So it actually says right here, it says the status, which means if it's on or on. The channel number, note number, this is like A, A sharp, uh, in which octave it is. And attack velocity is how hard you actually press the note. So this is pretty much MIDI. Uh, and the microcontroller actually transmits the MIDI through here to my computer, where I can actually read it through a program such as LMMS. Let's take a look at the PCB. So I designed this PCB in Easy EDA. I made all this stuff in Easy EDA. It's actually a really cool uh, company. I've actually ordered parts from them too, and it's very helpful. So if you want to buy any parts for this project, just go to Easy EDA. Um, right here is where I have my circuit. And as you can see, I have all the different yellow parts, and those are the different components, and those are placed on the circuit board. And then the auto router of uh, Easy EDA actually traces all these different paths to the different components in the way that the schematic intends. And this is really cool because I can place all these components and everything is traced out perfectly. So this is the code. So I didn't exactly write this code. Uh, I give all that credit to Evan Kale. To sum up this entire code, what it does is it basically shifts out each of these in the order. And it's very fast. Each of these comes on for only a few milliseconds. And then it tells uh, which of these output pins to read to know which keys are on and off. And it shifts out that MIDI and MIDI protocol. So that's pretty much how this works. So this right here is my circuit board. And it's printed out in toner on a piece of photo paper. So now I'll take this, I'll set it down on this piece of copper board. And I will use a hot iron to melt the toner from this side onto this side. Now after this circuit board is all etched in ferric chloride solution and drilled, the drilling actually only took me about 5 minutes, then you can start inserting all the components. Now the first components you need to insert are all these ones, and uh, these are the IC sockets where that will be holding the shift registers. So you can just push those into the holes, and they will fit nice and tight, and then insert the other socket. Then you can start to install the resistors that go right here and the resistor that goes right here, and the MIDI port. Alright, that looks really cool right there. We've got all of our headers, all of our components, and they're inserted into the holes. Now it's time to look at this mess of wires underneath and solder them all together. Alright, so this board is completely finished. 
We have the Arduino, we have all the resistors, we have the two shift registers, we have this connector, and we have the MIDI port all soldered in. As you can see, the bottom looks very nice. As you can tell, the contrast between this rat's nest of wires that was the old control system and this new board is very stark. As you can see, the new board looks a lot cleaner, it looks a lot more professionally done. And it works a lot better because there's less chance of any wires popping out and there's less chance of it stopping to function. So, let's install this new board inside the piano. So these are the six common leads of the button matrix inside the piano. And these go uh, to the bottom of the diodes that were inside which allow multiple keys to be pressed at the same time. And so these always have to have the current flowing out of them into something in the circuit. So I've taken a row of header pins and soldered them onto a little chunk of perf board and then I've soldered the ribbon cable into the perf board so that way it can be connected. So now all we have to do to connect this ribbon cable is just slide it in, connect it like that, and there you go. That board is connected to the piano. Now to connect it to a computer, all I need to do is take the MIDI port and plug it in here. And I need to take this wire, which goes to a power source, and plug it in here. As you can see, uh, the Arduino lights up when it's connected to power, and this board is currently ready to use. It just has the input from the piano keys, the power supply, and the MIDI output. That's just about all. So now all I need to do is plug the USB that goes to the MIDI converter into my computer, and I can actually play some songs uh, through LMMS using this keyboard. Alright, so now that your keyboard is all ready and all working, let's hear some songs on it. So right here I have LMMS, and that is a program that's free, and it allows you to take MIDI inputs and sample different things, and sample instruments, and also take samples off the internet. So that's what makes me able to do this. I'll turn up my volume a bit. That is how you play the Office theme song. Alright, now another cool thing about LMS is you can actually take samples of other things other than instruments. Like, I took a sample of my multimeter beeping. So if you press this multimeter, you can hear it go like this. Beeps. So I actually take, took that sound, and I sampled it. As always, I can play my theme song with the tenor tech multimeter beat. So, that is pretty cool. That is how you can take a keyboard and make your own circuit board to make it actually run really cool. And so you can have so many different uses. And now my favorite part about this is I can play almost infinitely different amounts of instruments on here. And I can actually record my songs on here. I can edit the notes that I play. So I can make really cool music with this new keyboard. And so that's why it's like a million times better than the old keyboard. It's so much fun to play. Um, still, I give credit to uh, Evan Kale for coming up, the, coming up with the idea for this. Uh, I will be posting the circuit board uh, layout in the description so you can... Make your own like that. As always, thanks for watching.